Hello, my name is Jennifer Hamilton, and I will be discussing the book Chains today, which was written by Lori Holtz Anderson. Chains is the first novel in the Seeds of America trilogy. The novel is a National Book Award finalist and has won a variety of other awards, including the 2009 Scott O'Dell Award for Historical Fiction. Critics describe the novel as remarkable for its strong sense of time and place and for its nuanced portrait of slavery and of New York City during the Revolutionary War. Chains tells the story of Isabel and Ruth Finch, two orphaned slave girls living in Rhode Island. Isabel is the eldest sister, who is an intelligent, fearless young woman, and is also fiercely protective of her younger sister Ruth. She describes Ruth as sweet and simple, and most likely suffering from epilepsy. When their master, Mary Finch, passes away, her heir, Mr. Robert, decides to sell the girls to a couple from New York City, Madam and Mr. Lockton, even though Mary's will has granted the girls their freedom. The story takes place from 1776 to 1777 in Revolutionary-era New York City. During this time, New York is a battleground for British and American forces fighting in the American Revolution, and the city is plagued by espionage, under-the-table dealings, and unrest. The Locktons are actually Tories, meaning that they support the British forces in the Revolution, and their large, wealthy estate is a meeting place for like-minded residents of the city who are planning the demise of George Washington and his army. Isabel and Ruth are responsible for maintaining the family's mansion, which gives Isabel the opportunity to spy on the dealings of the Locktons. Although Isabel tries to shield Ruth, Madame takes an interest in her and makes her a personal servant. When Ruth suffers her first seizure in front of Madame, she declares that Ruth is possessed by demons and must leave the house. Although Isabel convinces her to let them stay, it is apparent that they will not last long with the Locktons. A slave boy also living in New York, Corson, tells Isabel that if she provides information to his master, who is a patriot, about the anti-revolutionary activities of the Locktons, he will help them escape back to Rhode Island, where they can make a case for their freedom. Isabel begins to spy on Mr. Lockton and shares her secrets with the patriots, but when the time comes, they do nothing to help Isabel. Madame drugs Isabel one night and sends Ruth away, brutally attacking Isabel when she tries to escape and look for her sister. As the war truly begins in New York City, Isabel must continue to work in a house with a woman who she knows would like to see her sold off, or worse, while at the same time trying to find a way to locate her sister. The British quickly take control of New York, and Isabel's friend Corson, who fought the British as a patriot, is now a prisoner of war. If she is going to survive both the war and her masters, Isabel must make a decision to run or stay, risking both her life and the lives of her family and friends. The following is an excerpt from Chains, pages 291 to 292. I opened the front door of the Lockton mansion and looked up the street and down. Not a soul in sight. I picked up the basket, tightened the blanket across my shoulders, and stepped over the threshold. I closed the door behind me, walked down the front steps, and turned west. My plan was simple and foolhardy. Steal a rowboat, cross the river to Jersey, and walk to Charleston. I was counting on the commotion of the Queen's Ball to distract folks. If I could get to the boat in time, the tide would help me pull away from New York. At the first corner, my feet stopped. This was where I turned north most mornings to head up to the Bridewell. I urged my feet west toward the wharf. They did not listen. My remembry called up the feeling of being locked in the stocks, of my face being burnt, of him watching me from across the courtyard, him watching out for me. T'was Corson who made sure I survived. "'Twas he who had been my steadfast friend since the day they brought me here. I couldn't. It would be hard enough to sneak past two armies and not get stolen again by someone who would tear up my pass. 
and I didn't even have a pass for him. How to explain that? No, I couldn't. I looked west toward the river, then north, then west again. No, not couldn't. I shouldn't. But I had to. I had a debt to pay. If you would like to discover what happens to Isabel, you'll have to read Chains to find out.